I'm part of a, a business networking group called BNI, and that's how Jennifer and I met. And I've done some work with her in my business. It's been very helpful and useful. And I always find Jennifer's got some super clever things to say. So I really wanted to have. Uh, I better live up to those expectations. <laughs> exactly. So I wanted to have Jennifer on today. So, Jennifer, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, yeah, so I'm well, a mindset coach for entrepreneurs and I've been doing that for eight years and in business for 12. So I know that this is a entrepreneur on a good day. Being an entrepreneur can be hard. So of course, during a coronavirus and everything that's going on, it has created um, a lot more difficulties and fear for entrepreneurs. So I think that this is um, an important conversation. Absolutely, for sure. I definitely think it is. So, Jennifer, you mentioned that you had some tips that you thought would be helpful for entrepreneurs in terms of getting them through the crisis. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, well, when I was actually sitting down, um, because I wanted to put together a really good, um, actually, I'm putting together a really detailed blog post, and and, uh, I thought about what are the things that really matter when you come into times like this. And I, I came up with seven things. So the first thing that I, I think is really, really important for entrepreneur for anybody, but really for entrepreneurs is to be able to see it for what it is and not make it worse than it is. Mm. And this is very important because one of the biggest things that we need to do as entrepreneurs right now is we need to be in solution mode. Mm -hmm. and we need to be thinking creatively, we need to be pivoting, we need to be figuring out how can we solve problems that have been created by the coronavirus, Um, and we need to be, we need to be at the top of our game for our business, Mm -hmm. but when we go into fear and worry about what could happen, or what might happen, or how long is this going to take, or whatever, then that's making the situation worse than it is. Yeah. That hasn't happened yet. And it gets us into fear, which clouds our vision and clouds our clarity so that we cannot be in solution mode and be in our highest state of power in the moment. Mm-hmm. So that's the first thing is, yes, take in the facts, look at what's happening, get the information you need, but don't dream up and make stories about what if, what if, what if, because you're just going to end up paralyzed in fear. Right. Makes sense. That's good advice for sure. What would you say your number two thing would be for entrepreneurs? So the second thing is to take care of your mental, spiritual, and physical health. And this falls off the next one because, um, you know, I would say this at any time, like, you know, as a business coach, when I work with someone, one of the first things I'll discover is what are their health habits? And if they, if they're not exercisers, that's the first thing that goes on the list. Um, (laughs) because it's so important. If you want to be a successful entrepreneur, you have to think of yourself like an Olympic athlete and you have to take care of your body, your mind and your spirit. And so, um, from that perspective, like it's very easy again, when you're in crisis or there's a lot going on, um, to just like work and, and hustle and, and, but that works against you. You do not have access to your most creative, highest ideas, um, or have the best conversations or look at things in from the most objective, helpful perspective when you are not in good mental, spiritual and physical health. Right. So that needs to be a high priority. Um, So like, you know, eat clean, drink water, exercise, sleep, go outside, meditate, journal, do the things that make you feel good, but don't neglect your health. Right. At this time of crisis, this is the time where you need to almost up your health game. Do you think that it's a good time for entrepreneurs to even take a bit of a time out as well too, given kind of what's going on? I think if they need it and if their business allows that, then Absolutely. I mean, one thing that I know, and it's something that I prescribe from, I'm I'm very big on working from flow versus from hustle. And to me, this is not about time. It is about state. So when you work from a state of 
fear or worry or doubt. Now you're in hustle mode and you are not, you're going to burn yourself out. Um, you're not helping your business when you work from there. You're really, you're really only accessing like 10 to 20% of your full capability when you're down there. Um, so if taking time off, and breaks is going to put you back in a state of flow and trust and alignment, then yes, it's 100%. Because I always say to clients, I'd rather you work for two hours a day in a state of flow than eight hours in a state of hustle. You will accomplish more in two hours in flow right. than in eight hours of hustle and worry and fo- like unfocused work. Yeah, that's a really good point. Absolutely. And what about uh, number three? What was your number three lesson for navigating? So the third thing is to look for creative solutions. So I have five questions that I think will be really helpful for entrepreneurs because, you know, here's what's really interesting is we're at a time where this coronavirus, it's, it's going to potentially close some businesses. It's going to start new businesses it's going to catapult some businesses and it's going to put some businesses on shaky ground and it's all going to be dependent on what the business is and uh, how they respond to what's going on and et cetera. So what I wanted to do was give some questions so that, you know, you can really start to think about your business differently so that, you know, if you can make a pivot, you pivot. If you can have another flow of income coming in, you figure that out. So the first question, and this is a great question for any time of the year, but it is, what does this make possible? Mm. So what does this situation make possible for me? And I'm going to, I'll give you an example um, of everything, uh, of all the questions, because So for example, like for some business owners, this makes possible, oh, you know what? I really need to catch up on my accounting and I've been meaning to take this course and work on myself more and I want to hire this coach for a while. Maybe I'll hire this coach. And like, you know, for some people it's like, oh, let's get caught up on admin and things that we haven't done in a while or maybe deep clean my house. (laughs) Now, Totally. Yeah, I tried to do that the other day. I was like, I got halfway through. I'm like, oh, I still don't like cleaning. So, <laughs> and um, another thing is, um, so I had hosted a couple of calls, free calls for entrepreneurs. The first week, this really started to hit. And there was a brand photographer, a brand photographer for entrepreneurs on the call. And of course, she can't go take pictures right now of clients. Right. So we thought, okay, well, what does this make possible? What else can you do? And we came up with a really great idea, which was for her to create an online course for uh, uh, entrepreneurs who are personal brands, who have kids, and learn how to take great pictures of your family at home for social media. Hmm. When you're a personal brand, you, a lot of them, like, especially in the coaching consulting sphere, they're putting themselves out there and they're taking pictures at home all the time. Mm -hmm. So she's working on creating a course to help people understand that. And, and she wouldn't have done that if it wasn't for this crisis. Mm -hmm. Now she's off. What does this make possible? Oh, well, I never thought of this. So now she potentially has another huge income stream. I mean, she's out working on it now, right? Right. Absolutely. So it's funny, that kind of leads me to one of my questions is that, so you would actually recommend an entrepreneur consider starting a new business right now. Or, or like, can you offer something like for her as a brand photographer, it's not a core offering, but it's not far off from what she's Mm -hmm. doing. Right. Absolutely. And, And the other thing is, I think it depends on like, what is your financial situation? And cause like some people can ride this out for the couple of months, even if with decreased income, they're going to be fine. Mm-hmm. Um, other people is, are not in that position. And so if starting another business is what's in your best interest, which is why you got to have a clear head, which is why I said number one and two, like you want to <laughs> make decisions right. from a state of empowerment. Right. Right. And also every entrepreneur, depending on where they are in their business and how they've handled their finances, just find themselves in different financial positions. Right. Exactly. So, yeah. 
So the second question that people can ask is, how can I add value in different ways? Mm -hmm. So a really great example of this um, was from Kendra Scott. So Kendra Scott is an entrepreneur in the U.S. And um, I, when I heard her story, um, I thought, oh, this story is amazing. Amazing. Ooh. Like I want every entrepreneur to hear this. So you here's tell. what happened. Yeah, here's what happened. And you can, <laughs> you can go check her out after online. I don't know her personally. I heard her on a, a podcast and then I read an article she wrote about this. And I was like, this is fantastic. So here's what happened. So she had a jewelry business. And, uh, she had, it was kind of like a small business. Like I think she had one or two stores or something and, um, it was doing very well. And then the 2008 recession hit. Mm. And of course, jewelry is not a, uh, essential item, right? Yeah, totally. So what she, so she had her, her moment, her bank were calling on her loans and she had children and she was concerned. And what happened was she, so she had her breakdown moment, moved through her emotions, and then she got creative and she had this idea and she went to a local bank. So she had been with one of the big banks in the States. She mm -hmm. went to a local bank who knew her and they took over her loan and extended it. She was able to get um, really good rent because it was a recession. So she found a nice. great place to rent. And she made this, she had this idea to create a shopping experience like you've never seen in jewelry stores before. Hmm. And so like in jewelry stores, you know, when you go in, they're very like everything's covered in glass and you almost feel like you can't touch anything. And right. do you know what I mean? But she decided to make jewelry buying fun. And so she opened the store. It was totally different. And anyways, long story short, uh, the company is valued at a billion dollars. I think they have, I can't remember. I don't want to say exactly, but I think they have like a thousand locations now. Mm -hmm. um, a lot. Right. Okay. So she pivoted. She right. looked for a different way to add value and to a non-essential business. Mm, that's great. Right. That's amazing. That is amazing. It's a fantastic story. And, um, you know, I just thought God so perfect for right now. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right. Taking advantage of the situation, not even advantage, but trying to figure out what can you do to pivot? Well, yes. you know, you know, what's really interesting to Val is like, human beings are very resilient mm -hmm. and we are, there's this, um, there's a co-working space that I go to and in the bathroom, they have, uh, they have one of those, uh, chalk pens and you can like write on the walls of the bathroom, right. right. On the stalls. And of course they're chock full mm -hmm. of motivational quotes and all this kind of stuff. Right. And one of them, I don't remember who this quote is from, but it's along the lines of like, a woman is like a tea bag. She never really knows her strength until she's in boiling water. Oh, I love it. That's great. I was like, you know, that's, <laughs> I think like as human beings, most people really, and it's on, it doesn't have to get to this point, right. but for a lot of people, they really get creative and at their best when they're under pressure. Right. Makes a lot of sense for sure. Yeah. Like when you're pushed at it now. Um, so I think for some, like, you know, this is what happened to her and she was kind of going along and then she had this pressure and then all of a sudden it sparked a creative idea mm -hmm. um, that she could add value in a different way. And so what I love about that is like, you know, first of all, it's a great way to look at your business all the time, but she took a risk because she really had no other choice. Right. Absolutely. Her back was up against the wall and she just, she did something about it. Which she is made it happen. And, and that's, that's like, I, I truly believe if you, if you really want something, there is always a way it just doesn't come packaged the way you think it will all the time. Right. That's, absolutely. that's the key. That's the okay. Key. Yeah. So the third question entrepreneurs can ask themselves is what do my customers and clients need most right now? Mm -hmm. 
So I recently had a launch. I launched my membership site, the Joyous Journey, um, which is a mindset membership site. Mm -hmm. But I asked myself this question. And what I, the answer brought about some of the bonuses that I wanted to give members. Hmm. And so the bonuses I had, uh, in, I had, um, reached out to some of my wonderful friends and colleagues, uh, who are trained in different things than I am. Right. And so I have, um, one friend coming to do, uh, EFT sessions, which is a healing modality, um, to help decrease stress for everybody and, to, uh, talk about, uh, brain and prosperity, money mindset. I have another colleague who's an image strategist and she's going to talk about, uh, uh, communicating your brand during, uh, turbulent times. Mm. And then I decided, um, to do a six week, online marketing training for everybody because I built my business online. I've been doing it for a long time. So right. um, now, but this is a mindset membership site, but it's for entrepreneurs. But I asked myself, like, what do people need? And you know what? People really need to up their online marketing game. Right. And, and I was like, so even though this is not a strategy site, I'm going to do this additional training because this is how I can add value to what, my clients and customers need most right now on top of obviously having a strong mindset. Right. That's a great idea. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's the third question. The fourth question is, is there a different clientele I can serve in the same or different way? Hmm. So an example here would be the breweries and distilleries here in Toronto are making hand sanitizer. Yeah. They're, right. Yeah. So again, it's about getting out of the box and looking at your business and thinking, cause here's the thing, mm -hmm. you know, you know, like business is about solving problems. That's what yes. the business does not exist if it doesn't solve a problem. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the coronavirus is creating a lot more problems, mm -hmm. right? So anyone who's in um, like entertainment for children right now, market, yeah. great time to be in that market. Yeah, absolutely. Right. If you teach parents how to homeschool, what a great market to be in right now. Mm -hmm. Right? Like sales are going to go up, up, up for these types of companies. It's true. Yeah, absolutely. Or like a delivery uh, services. Right? Absolutely. Oh. One of my so, friends uh, is a wine agent. And so she was offering to deliver cases of wine to people. And, you know, it's interesting because her restaurant business is clearly down. She can't sell to restaurants anymore. But as you're talking about, she can up her business with personal people like myself. So, of course, yesterday I had a box of wine show up my door. Hey, Devel, I got to tell you something. So, I love wine. I don't drink a lot of wine, but I like a glass every now and again. Right. And I went on an emergency run to the LCBO because I thought they're going to close they're going to close the LCBO and I need to have some wine because this, we're going to be in our houses for a long time. And, <laughs> and then they end up not closing the LCBO, but that's what I did because I thought I didn't have any in the house. And I thought I want a couple bottles. Like we're going to be here for like two months, I think. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. <laughs> who knows? Uh, anyways, but so that's the, um, that's the fourth one is, you know, is there a different clientele I can serve in yes. the same or different way? Right. Perfect. And then the fifth question is how can we maximize our resources? So where is your money best spent yep. and where can I save? And so, like I said earlier, like for some people, um, this might be a really good time to invest in, in coaching or an online program or something right. that you're wanting to do. Right. Um, and then for other businesses, they're going to have to figure out where can we cut corners? Where can we, you know, save money? So it's just like thinking about what are your resources and how can you maximize them? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's so a very good five, for sure. The five questions for that one. Okay, cool. Yeah. So I had a couple questions for you in terms of uh, it's a, something I've noticed myself. Normally, when I and I don't, I generally don't work from home. I work from an office. I find that I'm much more productive there. When I'm at home, all I want to do is clean or do whatever. Yeah. And with COVID-19, I'm finding myself, I'm at home, but I'm getting sucked into the TV and I'm watching the news and, you know, kind of decided I'm not setting my alarm anymore. I'm just waking up when I wake up and then I go do my workout. And then by the time I kind of get showered, dressed and finish breakfast, it's 11 o'clock. Yep. 
And I'm finding that my days are completely unproductive. So it's funny. So today, because we had our BNI meeting at 7.15, yes. got up, and although I had some Zoom calls in between, I found I had a much more productive day, partly because I started it earlier in the morning. Mm -hmm. Generally, I normally, I know that I work really well first thing in the morning. And then in the afternoon, I don't work so well. Mm. So I guess what would you suggest for entrepreneurs in terms of trying to figure out what part of the day is more productive for them so they can try to at least get more done when they should get more done? Yeah. Well, I know you are a morning person, so you should be getting up early still. Like, <laughs> for you, you know, it's funny because over the years, clients like, you know, you'll hear, um, you'll hear high performers, uh, trainers say, you know, be kind of the 5am club, et cetera, et cetera. But honestly, you know, I think this is a matter of you got to know who you are and when you work best, because I have some clients who are total night owls and they just get so much work done at night. And I'm like, mm -hmm. stop trying to be a morning person. If you like the night, like who cares? It's the same thing. You get it done. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's about giving yourself permission to figure out what does work best for you? Like maybe try getting up early for a week and see if that works. And if not go the other way, I, I think it's more, you got to figure out what yours is. And then, you know, if you are a morning person, I'm a morning person too. Yeah. So it's so easy to sleep in, but like, I'm like you, like if I get up early and get exercised and get in the shower, like I'll have a much more productive day than if I just like laze around. Yeah. And it's funny. I kind of felt like, Oh, you know, maybe I should just cut myself some slack because we're at home and I can't do anything. I mean, of course I'm doing some work, but I just thought maybe I should just give myself a bit of a break and not set the alarm. And, you know, I'd wake up at like 7.30 or 8 a.m., which isn't late at all. It's still pretty early, but I just felt like by the time I get up, I meditate, I work out, I eat breakfast, I'm ready at 11. I'm like, that's not going to work. <laughs> well, then you already know the answer for you. <laughs> yeah, I, gotta, I, I need to go to bed early. Like, I just kind of thought, ooh, let me live the lifestyle and stay up late until 11 o'clock. But no. <laughs> It's not, it's, it's not working, you know? <laughs> so absolutely. Yeah. Melanie, did you have any questions for Jennifer here? Melanie? Are you still? Well, she's muted. She's yeah. muted. Okay. I unmuted. Sorry. Uh, okay. Yeah, no, nothing at the moment. It's, uh, yeah, I think getting your day more productive, I think, you know, uh, the first point was where you don't get too caught up with everything and, you know, get ahead of yourself and start uh, thinking about 10 different scenarios that have not happened. I think, yes. uh, I think that can consume you completely. And, you know, uh, I, I think having conversations with people is important. So, yeah, I would say that. And yeah, spring cleaning is always good, but yeah, I, I, I agree that I like to get up and actually get changed in the morning and not stay in my, night clothes otherwise the day just seems like uh, you, you're not able to differentiate right because I guess that's the challenge if you've not worked from home then that's the challenge about working from home absolutely Sean did you have any comments or questions uh, not so much as good, good content uh, my part of my problem is I'm the opposite I no matter how, I, I tend to work better at night. We discovered that last <laughs> night. Uh, Jen was doing some yoga for two hours, and I got more work done in that two hours than you know I did all day. And for me, when I'm feeling not productive, I need to like get a change of scenery. So I literally, if I'm at the office, I go downstairs and just walk around the building, and that like resets me, fresh air. Well, as fresh as it can be downtown Toronto, but. Uh, <laughs> You know, but here, like I'm, I'm in self isolation. I don't know if you guys know, but I, I, I literally cannot leave this 500 square foot condo. So there's no, there's no that's change hard. of scenery. So that's, that's my hard. problem. Like I've been reduced to like, like today, I took an hour at lunch and literally sat on the couch and watched like a show to give myself a break instead of just you know calling it at three o'clock and then watching a show. You know, watching three back to back shows was my sort of justification. So that's what I'm struggling with. But um, yeah, in terms of, uh, you know, I was trying to think of how I could pivot as Jennifer was mentioning. And I don't know that that's necessarily uh, in my 
bag of tricks currently. Well, but I think, I think in, um, in the case of yours, Sean, um, this is a very good time for marketing for you, for creating more content and like finding ways to add more value to your audience through that avenue. Because one of the... Um, one of the things I think is really important for entrepreneurs right now is to not stop marketing. If anything, like either keep what you're doing or up the ante because, you know, people, people will remember who helped them as we move through this and things get back to normal, whatever that new normal is going to be. But right. it is a really great time to be marketing yourself, putting yourself out there. And, um, and, uh, Sean, to your point, you actually made uh, in your presentation this morning is what a great time to educate people on, you know, how things can go wrong and you need insurance. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of what I was thinking because I had suggested a friend of mine touch base with you because for a lot of entrepreneurs right now, their value is themselves. And if they get sick, like if they got COVID-19 or something else, yeah. they have disability insurance. Yeah. So yeah. someone like yourself, I think it's a great time for you to be out there talking to people about the value of something like having disability insurance, because right now people could be sick. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Now I still have more points to build. Oh, sorry. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> point, point, three, <laughs> point three had five questions. That was okay. Awesome. Okay. So the fourth thing people entrepreneurs can do um, to help themselves navigate through turbulent times is to ask for help. And I say that because oftentimes entrepreneurs don't like asking for help because they like to do everything themselves. Um, but I think it's a really important time to flex the muscle of asking for help. And this, and I mean this in the, in very, a lot of formats. So it could be even like help around the house. Mm. It could be, um, help from if you need to take advantage of those government subsidies and things that are going out or from banks or whatever. It could be from friends or family and helping you in your business somehow or getting creative and helping you brainstorm. Mm. But I just want entrepreneurs like, I know many of them don't like asking for help, but like asking for help could really help you right now. <laughs> so I like that. Yeah. Um, and then the fifth one is the opposite, which is help others. And one of the things that I know about human beings is that they like helping others and they want to be needed. And it, it lifts your spirits to help other people. So, you know, um, you know, we see so many celebrities out there. Uh, doing free concerts online now, um, people delivering things for others and uh, bringing joy to people in so many different ways, which is amazing to see. I'm loving watching those videos right now on social media. Mm -hmm. um, and even doing free trainings for your communities, for those of you in influence, influence positions like that. Um, but just simple things and letting the fact letting you be of service to another will uplift your spirit and make you feel good. Yes. And then that's good for your business as well. Mm -hmm. It's really important. Definitely you makes a lot of sense for sure. Yeah. Um, the sixth thing that people can do is utilize this time. Now you should be doing this all year round, but you could start now if you're not doing this, but utilize this time to start building your mindset. Um, so there's a really uh, popular quote that floats around the self-help world. And I don't really know who originally said this, but it's that uh, success is 80% psychology and 20% mechanics. Hmm. And um, I don't know about your experience, but from my experience, I believe it's almost like 90% psychology. Like there's just... Uh, what goes on in your head matters greatly. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that, you know, when you look at the time that we're in right now, those who have been working on their mindset and who are very confident in who they are, what they're doing in their business, et cetera, they are going to fare through this a lot better than those who are not in that position. Right. And that's a matter of practice right? It is a, it's a practice state to be, to be certain, to be confident, 
to be focused and aligned. Um, and so what I really encourage people to do is really start working on their mindset. There's tons of ways to do this. You can start with books, podcast, joining, get, getting a coach, joining a membership, but like there's, there's everywhere from free to paid all the way up the spectrum, mm -hmm. but working on your mindset really, really matters. And then the last thing that ties into this is I want everyone to remember, like we humans, like we are very powerful. And if you want to create something, you can. And sometimes problems are the best packages you need right. to really make, move the needle for you in a way that you never would have otherwise. Right. So like, remember your own power. Like I'll always say to my clients, I'm like, you are your best asset. Like nothing, like it, if you, this is why like learning is good because if you, if you can take money away from people, you can take a job away, you can take an opportunity away. But if that person has their knowledge, has their, their grit, has their passion, has their perseverance, mm -hmm. like nothing's going to stop them. Right. And yeah, like I, I want people to remember that. And that even if this time is difficult for your business financially, you get through it. Like, right. and, and, and if, whether that means your business will survive or you get another business or you get a job and then you get a business or whatever, but like in the grand scheme of things, you will be okay, which ties back to number one of, you know, don't make it worse than it is. Right. We're not going to pretend this is fun and pretty when it's not, but when you, when you look from the grand scheme of your life, yeah. you know, 10, 20 years from now, you got to decide who do you want to be in this moment? And therefore, how are you going to make the best out of what happens? Because that's what we're doing all the time. Anyways, this is just Absolutely. a heightened version of real life. Absolutely. It's funny. It makes me think there's this book. I think her name is Angela Duckworth. The name oh, of yeah. She wrote the book Grit. Yeah. And it's about perseverance and that whole idea of, you know, persevering and just keep going, really. It's not about how many times you get knocked down. It's about getting back up again after getting knocked down. And so you're right. This is a difficult time period for a lot of people, but it's really about staying the course and not getting knocked down. Yeah. And not getting tied into it. And here's what's, what's interesting is, you know, whether it's coronavirus or you get sick or you make a bad investment or you let fear stop you from doing something, you know, or a family member gets ill or you get in a car accident, like shit happens all the time. Mm -hmm. all the time the equivalent of a coronavirus in terms of the impact of your on your life happens to people all the time absolutely people die people lose partners people go through divorces people like it happens mm -hmm. and so but the but the one thing that doesn't change no matter what the external thing is is who you choose to be and who you choose to be is what ends up with your results anyways. Right. And I think the benefit of now is that everybody's actually going through this bad time together. Yeah. As opposed to going through that bad thing that's only happening just to you, now you've got a bad event that's literally happening to the entire world so everybody can relate about how tough it is. And you get to decide... Am I going to help lead the way and spread light for people? Mm -hmm. Or am I just going to go into fear and be a part of the problem? Mm -hmm. And for, for entrepreneurs who want to come out of this as best as possible, you have to choose the light. You have to choose positivity. You have to choose getting creative. You, yes. And you have to choose it in every moment because because it, like depending on your business, it could be harder for you right now for others. Like I said, other businesses are thriving now. So it just really depends that who you choose to be is, is always your choice, no matter what's going on. And that's, what's going to make the difference in your business and in your life, whether we're in the middle of coronavirus or we're in the middle of whatever the next 
difficult time is. Absolutely. It makes me think of, there's a Zig Ziglar quote, and it says something like, if I'm, and of course I'm going to butcher this, but that your attitude will affect your altitude. So 100%. exactly what you're talking about, it really is, is having a positive attitude because that will affect your altitude more than anything else, more than the mechanics that you're talking about of whether you are the best person to do whatever job it is. It doesn't matter if you have the best skill set. It's more about your attitude than anything else. And you know what else, Debelle, you know what's interesting is like people, people want to be led. Like mm -hmm. people are looking for leadership mm -hmm. and people want to do business with people who they, they aspire to or who they relate to. And I don't care what business you're in or what industry you're in, but like, and this is why people like to buy from companies that do good for charity, right? Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. They, and so this is a really great opportunity for any entrepreneur in any industry to show up to lead, to show their tribe and their clients and their potential clients and their family that like who they really are. And that's attractive. That's attractive. People want to be around people who are motivating and positive and leading the way. Like there's enough doom and gloom in the world. Like we don't <laughs> just turn on the news done. Like right? be a source of light, even yes. if all hell is breaking loose in your business <laughs> and it will pay off in, in dividends. Yeah, I absolutely agree for sure. Definitely. Hmm. For sure. Did you have anything else on your list for entrepreneurs that you think is helpful? No, that's my list now. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I think I managed to ask you most of my questions. I mean, the only question I didn't ask is, uh, but I mean, I think you kind of alluded to this, is that now is a good time for entrepreneurs to try to reevaluate their priorities. Oh, I think... You know what's interesting is um, I think times of difficulty or you have a failed project of some sort is a great time to look at your priorities because, um, well, you should be doing it all the time because like shiny objects are pretty shiny and uh, right. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so I think this is a, a, a perfect time for people to go like, What's really important, and even I had to sit down and I actually just made changes to my Q2 plans because it, I have, it's responsive to what's happening right now. Yeah. Um, and again, but I make the changes keeping in mind the end goal. Like my end goal has not changed. Right. It's just that the environment that I'm playing in now is changing. So I'm going to pivot along with it. You're going to zig when things are zagging. Yeah. Like you got to, right. And so I think it's, it's always a great time to sit back and reevaluate. And even, you know, the, um, the example of the jeweler, you know, she, her business was so much more fun when she reevaluated Yes. And she loves it now. And then it's, it's scaled and skyrocketed and, and like, she's doing really cool things and, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think that's a definitely the good way to go. And I mean, I, that's what I'm doing in my business, right? I mean, right now we're kind of on lockdown. It's not really a good time for people to be selling or buying. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I used to have a podcast way back when, and I just got so busy. I never really had the time to do it. And right. so now I thought, same thing as what you're talking about. How do I be of service to people? Because now's a different time and people need different things. So I thought, you know what? I know a lot of people that I can interview and showcase their work and showcase their values. So yeah, that's what I'm kind of doing twice a week, interviewing somebody different that I think is going to be a value to people right now. And so it's great content for me to put out there. You know, Thursday, I'm going to be interviewing an employment lawyer about losing your job and getting laid off because that's what's happening to people right now. So yeah. Yeah, I think it's really important to try to be, don't be tone deaf about what's going on. Be relevant about what people actually want to know. You know, yes. last week I interviewed a, a metabolic balance coach about the quarantine 15 and gaining weight because people are all working from home now and snacking out of the fridge. So yeah. that's what people are curious to learn more about. It's a big one. I got quarantine 15. That's hilarious. <laughs> 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 I work from home all the time. So I like, it's just, it's normal to me, but, uh, for people who are 
not used to it. It would definitely be an adjustment. And yeah. Yeah. I'm not used to working from home. And also usually I shop when I need food. So I shop every two or three days and now right. everything's in the house and I'm looking at it or eating it. And it's just, yeah. I, I, you know, I think the first two weeks it was a bit of a shock. Now I'm starting to get more into a routine. Right. So like I'm snacking way less than I did at the beginning, but it's an adjustment. You got to be mindful. Even, even from someone who's worked from home for a long time, I'm always mindful. Wait, am I really hungry or am I just bored <laughs> or I need a break? Right. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. So yeah. Awesome. Melanie or Sean, do you guys have any more questions for us? No, I think it's been pretty useful to listen to you, Jennifer. Good. Awesome. Good. Great. Sean? No, I don't think I have any, anything else. Okay. Perfect. Awesome. Well,